I'm Dave McLaren and you are watching the CLF Research YouTube channel. Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about the ASAT guitar, specifically the name ASAT, where did that come from? What does it mean? It's a very common question. So uh, we're gonna do that in a bit of a uh, magical history tour vibe as uh, basically it's the only way I know how to do is storytelling. So imagine it is the middle of the 1980s, the sales manager here, Dale Hyatt, who ran g &L Music Sales, he was increasingly thinking about making instruments that were more Fender shaped to go kind of directly compete against Fender instruments. He was thinking about, you know, a Telecaster kind of guitar and he had in mind to use the pickups and the bridge, particularly from a model called SC2 and kind of repurpose it into this kind of shape. So therefore people see this shape, they go, they have certain expectations about what kind of tool it is, right? People see Telecaster shape, they think, okay, well, it does that kind of thing. So let's see how it does that, right? Dale probably thought that was a, a really good idea. So this SC2 got repackaged. It was named in 1985, it debuted and it was called the Broadcaster, the Broadcaster by g &L. It did not take long for Fred Gretsch to uh, to pipe up and say, hey, we remind you, uh, we still have a trademark for the Broadcaster drums. You know, it's Broadcaster with a K. Plays cease and desist using Broadcaster on the instruments. And of course, this is the same story that happened with the Fender Company. So you can imagine you know, it was 19... Uh, uh, 50, you know, they come out with the broadcaster guitar and then shortly thereafter Fred Gretsch goes Hey, I've got this trademark on broadcaster uh, Knock that off. So then Fender had the period of the no caster before uh, uh, Coming up with the name Telecaster which really was cooler in a way because broadcasting at the time you know, in 1950 that was the big deal You know, it was it was still radio was a big thing But if you had to replace it, what was the next thing TV telecasting that was advanced? You know, this instrument would sort of telecast, so that was kind of thing. But hey, uh, the use of Broadcaster, it was a cool thing. It got a lot of attention. They advertised it heavily like in Guitar Player Magazine. You know, there was no internet in 1985. This is what they looked like. They were, they were black. A few of them had Kaler vibratos on it, but basically this is uh, this is kind of the my favorite look of it with the Satellock Bridge, the two jumbo, uh, MFD pickups, basically what we know today, what we call today the ASAT special guitar is the original GNL broadcaster. But after Fred Gretsch said, hey, knock that off. The next year for 86, the name was changed to ASAT. So the word ASAT, people have speculated it means, oh, after Strat, after Telly, it means all this. You know, and then some of them are not very flattering. What it is, ASAT is actually short you know, for a military weapon. It was an anti-satellite missile. So anti-satellite was short, shortened to ASAT, right? And it was often like A-SAT for anti-satellite missile. So in the 1980s, a lot of the GNL instruments, they had names after US military hardware, I think, George and Leo liked the idea of the of projecting uh, the instruments projecting power and quality and precision, you know. So naming them after U.S. military hardware, you know, the Comanche was really after a attack helicopter. Anyway, so the broadcaster was very quickly named ASAT after the anti-satellite missile the following year. This example, this is in 1987, so it's basically the same thing as the broadcaster. Uh, it's just the name changes. It says ASAT and a little tiny by Leo Fender. In the same way, this broadcaster and a little tiny, just a little tiny script has his signature by Leo Fender. The fact that they were putting Leo Fender on was not uh, making certain people very happy, as uh, as well known. But any in any case, uh, ASAT was the name. A few years later, a couple years later, rather, the uh, ASAT became available in two versions. One of them had the black hardware and so forth like that. And the other one had a white uh, anodized pick guard, aluminum pick guard. And uh, it had the Leo Fender signature decal. These were called the uh, uh, ASAT signature series. And Appear debuts 
This is the ASAT logo, the large one that uh, we use quite a bit today. And interestingly, this is in 1991, so I kind of like this. You know, there's a graph tech nut. There's a little transition where back then they were using the earlier CLF research one, which I personally dig. I, my guess is that this looks a little bit more tra traditional, but still a bit advanced. So Leo's, okay, we'll go with it. So this is the uh, ASAT signature series. This is very much like what we based on the ASAT special. In fact, in 1991, after Leo Fender passed, it was immediately afterward that there was indeed a lawsuit from the Fender company. And uh, that was the, actually the first thing that my family uh, had to resolve because we were in the process of uh, buying Gino. It was actually my brother who who was the one who was persistent about buying Gino. But, uh, and anyhow, it's 1991 and we have to settle a lawsuit. And one of the things that was at the top of the list was uh, not using Leo Fender, you know, signatures on the, the instrument, which uh, I can understand that's their trademark. Uh, it was being pushed pretty hard. Maybe not the kind of taste that I would be into today, but for collectability, it's pretty cool. So we have the story of ASAT, the guts came from a model called SC2. Uh, it was repackaged into a familiar shape and it was named the Broadcaster. And shortly after that, Fred Gretsch, hey, knocked that stuff off and it was renamed ASAT, which is short for Anti-Satellite Missile. The name actually came from a guy named Richard Smith and Richard is an author and uh, he was a friend and you know he lived locally and he would come down and visit so you know whoever's around ideas might get bounced off so ASAT that was Richard's one so I don't know if he ever sees this or watches YouTube hats off to you it was a cool name and I have a kind of a speculation about this this is uh, this is just me I never asked Richard this thing but and maybe it's me projecting but I, I think this visual Okay, if, uh, imagine it's uh, like 1986 at the time, and you have a ASAT missile, okay? An ASAT missile goes up and, and its job is to blow up what? A satellite. You use an anti-satellite missile, boom, go up there to see, blow up the satellite. And what might a satellite have been used for at that time? Telecasting. So in a way, it was sort of, a, I think, could have been a symbolic nod that, hey, this thing, this is here to kill the other guy, you know? Uh, maybe I'm putting too much into it, but it's a fun thing to kind of contemplate. Anyway, I think that'll do it for today. That is the story of the ASAT name and where it comes from. I hope you enjoyed this and look forward to seeing you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click the like button and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Hope to see you next time. Thanks.